Welcome back to Praxis. Um, so we're in um, this mini series on fasting. Um, last week we looked at the way that the physical hunger of fasting God uses to like expose and reveal and surface our true spiritual hunger that we often don't realise or see or have very little awareness of. This week I want to read um, a short scripture from the book of Isaiah and then I'll just share a couple of thoughts. This is Isaiah. Isaiah is one of the Old Testament prophets. Um, chapter 58. It is a long book. Um, uh, verse 3. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you've not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarrelling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Like, there's clearly a bit more to fasting, and that's what, you know, God is teaching his people here. What is that? It's, you know, he goes on, verse 6. Is not this the kind of fasting I've chosen? Okay, what kind of fasting has he chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide your, the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. There seems to be this link in um, Isaiah and uh, that fasting's linked to injustice and the plight of the poor and the hungry. There's something about fasting helping people um, engage, I guess, in issues of injustice and issues you know, pertaining to the sort of poor and the hungry. Why? Why might this have anything to do with this practice of fasting? Why might this practice of fasting be a helpful one for us to engage in? I think the reason's this. When we fast, we experience something that for those of us that live in plenty, that aren't among the kind of you know poor and, and the hungry, um, we experience something that we never normally experience in life. We experience hunger. Um, and for those living in the 21st century West, hunger is not something that um, you know, it's particularly common to us. It's not true hunger. I mean, like, you know, occasionally we're, you know, I get to the evening meal and I'm a bit like, oh gosh, I'm feeling very hungry. And, you know, but, you know, my dinner's happening half an hour late. I'm not that hungry, you know. Like, I, I rarely do we experience what true hunger feels like. And there's something about fasting, intentionally not eating, that I think helps us just a little bit you know, have a bit of solidarity with the poor. It's like we experience a glimpse, and I think it is only a glimpse, but we experience a glimpse of their daily experience. We're choosing to do it, we're only doing it for a little bit, but we experience a little bit of their daily reality. And, and I think one thing I've discovered as I've engaged in this practice is that God, you know, every now and then just uses it to remind me, oh my gosh, like, People are feeling like this every day, but they haven't chosen it. You know, and, and I, I found a, a just, you know, God just in and through this practice, just help me become a little bit more, you know, I'm not going to over dramatize this, but a little bit more aware actually of the reality of the life of the poor and the hungry. It's helped me become a little bit more compassionate to their cause. Like I'm sure the longer I engage in this practice, the more God will do that in and through me. You know, practicing fasting actually helps us become more compassionate people who care more for the poor and the hungry. Because in and through it, God helps us to identify more with their experience and to see, you know, the awfulness of it and to move us to a different attitude and therefore different action. And so as you're 
giving fasting a go this week, I really encourage you, maybe ask Jesus to just speak to you through this. Maybe as you feel hungry, remember that what you're glimpsing you know, is, a, is a glimpse of the daily experience of so many in this world. And allow Jesus to soften your heart in and through that and to change you and to allow you to become more compassionate and to see the world with his eyes and to see the poor with his eyes and be transformed and be set free.